Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Objective of this lesson is to explain the existence of different states of matter and we'll explain that in terms of the balance between intermolecular force and the thermal energy. We'll explain the laws that governs the ideal behavior of the gas. We'll apply some gas law in real life situation. We'll explain the real gases. Please uh, note that there's a difference between ideal gas and real gas. We'll explain that also. We'll describe the condition for liquidification of gas. We'll see that we can liquefy gas too. We'll realize that there is a continuity in gas and liquid state. So the liquid and continuous state is kind of merged sometimes. We will explain that and we use the term fluid for that. We will differentiate between the gaseous state and vapor state. And we will explain the properties of liquids in terms of intermolecular attraction. The first question that, that should come to your mind is why should we study matters? The whole chapter is states of matter. So there are three states we know. The first question is why should we study matter? So if you see there are three states of matter. This is if you see is solid, this is liquid and this is gas. And if you see in this case the same material if you see for all these three the chemical formula will be H2O for all these three. If you talk about ice, water or vapors are right here. This is ice, this is water and this is vapors. And for all these three, the, sorry, water vapors. So for all these three, the chemical formula is H2O, correct? But if you see the same H2O exists as ice, which is solid, liquid, the water, and also in the gaseous or steam form. So you must be thinking why? Why we have the same chemical compound actually H2O in three different forms? What is the law that governs this? What decide whether the compound will be solid, liquid or gas? Also if you observe that if you heat uh, uh, ice it becomes liquid. You heat further, it becomes gas. This is something which you observe. So, we will we'll understand why on heating, ice becomes water, water becomes vapors. So there are some laws which governs all this thing. Right? This is the general formula, the natural phenomenon happens and you observe these, right? We, we see H2 in forms of ice, water and gas. So, a lot of questions come to your mind. Why? Why this happens? Why water exists or H2 exists in solid, liquid or gas? So in this chapter, we will try to explain most of these. And that's the reason why we are studying the states of matter. And also, if you see, the physical properties are all different for all three. Right? This is very hard. This is liquid kind. This is gas. But, as I told, the chemical composition is same. Right? See, one thing to note here is that although the chemical property is same, but the chemical reaction, the rate of chemical reaction do depend on physical state. For example, if I am reacting sodium with ice or sodium with vapors, there will be huge difference in the, the rate of chemical reaction. So rate of chemical reaction do depend on physical state. Though we say that all these three have the same chemical uh, property, all our H2O is two hydrogen molecule and oxygen molecule, but the rate of chemical reaction is dependent on physical state, right? Also, one thing to note is when I'm talking about water boiling, right? Do I talk about individual molecule of uh, water boiling? No, because individual molecule if you see is like this, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Can it boil? Can you boil this? 
you can't actually it doesn't make sense right because it is just a chemical compound which is uh, held tightly with a covalent bond it's, it's a it's a compound you can't boil it you can't boil, boil a individual molecule but collectively you have tons and tons of molecules in a glass of water and then you can boil it so note here that individual molecule they do not boil but the bulk boils right hope you understand the point so individual molecules there are so many molecules you can't boil one molecule but if you have all these molecules in, in a lot of in lakhs crores of molecules in, in a tumbler of uh, in, a, in a glass you can boil it and we'll, we'll explain why, why why what is boiling and why we see boiling when we talk about in a uh, bulk of molecules so we'll explain we'll try to understand all these things in this chapter right also if you see when you say uh, let's suppose we have uh, any chalk we have chalk and if you put water in the chalk it will wet or if you have a cloth cloth is a carbon compound right so cloth material you have it will wet you put water in and it will wet but will individual molecule of water wet or individual molecule of compound wet no same thing here also individual molecule they do not wet but the collection of water has a wetting property so all these things will will, will understand when we go through this chapter these all these questions will be answered when we study this chapter in detail right and also if you see uh, this is my solid this is my liquid this is my gas and uh, if you see here my in solid if you see the molecules are tightly packed in liquid the space is little more and gas they are all the more free to roam around so that is how uh, you differentiate solid liquid and gas we'll explain more on that when we go through the chapter so before we discuss or we start the chapter let's talk about intramolecular in, and intramolecular force so what is intramolecular force and what is intramolecular force See, if you are confused between intramolecular and intramolecular, if you remember these two words, I think you must be aware of this word, there is something called internet and intranet, right? Internet and intranet. So what is internet and what is intranet? So when you talk about intranet, that means there must be a website in your school land and you can access that in the LAN itself. LAN is nothing but local area network. So you have something in your uh, school campus or college campus and that website is accessible only in that particular network. You call it as intranet website. But you have something like as google.com. You can access anywhere, right? Google, Facebook, Orkut, all the sites you can access anywhere. In fact, examfear.com also you can access anywhere. So all these are nothing but an internet. That means you can access from anywhere. And this one is intranet. That is internally in the land. That means when you're talking about intramolecular force, you're talking about force inside the molecules. So if I have a molecule, for example, I'll, I'll take an example. Example water molecule I'll take. The way it forms is like this. Right, this is my water molecule, and sorry, there should be one hydrogen here which is missing. So, there are two hydrogen and one oxygen. This is my oxygen, this is my oxygen actually. Right, so there are more such molecules if you see. So, all are my H2. This is my H2, 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 or H2 molecules. Now, if you see, when I'm talking about intramolecular force, I'm talking of force within this so if it, this is my molecule i'm talking of the force within this for example the force between this hydrogen and this oxygen this hydrogen this oxygen for example if you see if i draw something like this so i have force acting between this oxygen this hydrogen right this oxygen and this hydrogen similarly this oxygen this hydrogen so these kind of force these kind of force is my intramolecular force because I have let's suppose this is my school actually 
So this is my school, right? So all the source, all the sites which I access from here locally, right? They are all intramolecular within the school. But when you talk about internet or intramol intermolecular, that means this is one molecule, this is another mo molecule, and there is a force between them. And that force is called intramolecular force. And we'll study more about this force in this chapter. And this is the force which actually decides whether a particular compound is solid, liquid, or gas. So this, this force has a huge importance on deciding the physical property. So hope you understand. When you talk about intramolecular force, we're talking about the force within the molecule. So I have one molecule, H2O molecule. This is a molecule within my uh, rectangular uh, uh, area. And the force uh, among hydrogen and oxygen atom in this molecule, they are all my intermolecular force. Sorry, intramolecular force, right? And when you talk about uh, the force between two molecules, two different molecules, that is intermolecular force, correct? So we'll explain more of, on, on that. So hope you understand this. See, the way it works is if you take a hydrogen molecule now here, this guy, for example, if there is a nucleus here, this, uh, this is my electron, and it keeps revolving here. So there is a force between these also, right? So if you see, water molecule, water, full water, there is a glass of water here. If you go at this level, this is my neutron and proton, this electron moves around. So there is a force between electron and proton, correct? And overall this atom is stable, so this is my atom actually. Now atom combines to form molecule, right? And various atom has, I mean this atom combines and when they combine, they have some force between them, right? So that force is intramolecular force, which binds this whole molecule. So when I talk about a whole molecule, you have intramolecular force in the picture. But one molecule is very small, and when you talk about water, you talk about millions of molecules, and all these molecules are held together by intermolecular force. For example, this molecule and this molecule, or these molecules, all these are held by intermolecular force, right? So so if you see, starting with this, this uh, electrostatic force between the electrons and the protons, and then we have intramolecular force between atoms, I right here. The first level of force will be my electrostatic force, and this is nothing but the electrons and protons, right? And then I have intramolecular force, intramolecular force. And that is between atoms. Between atoms in a molecule. So this is one molecule between atoms and the molecules. And then we have intermolecular force. One step ahead. Right? So this is between different molecules. Hope you understand the whole uh, structure. So you have something called electrostatic force, atom level, then you have intermolecular, intramolecular force at my molecule level, and then you have intermolecular force, if you take the, I mean plenty of molecules, and then force between the molecules are intermolecular. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.